Materials supplied by Microsoft Corporation may be used for internal review, analysis, or research only. Any editing, reproduction, publication, rebroadcast, public showing, internet or public display is forbidden and may violate copyright law. I have a question to the, the first speaker. Uh, you talked about the, uh, the city operating systems, but the normal operating system and the city operating system may be uh, different in the sense that the city operating system could be integrated in the city infrastructure, which means it can, should survive uh, 50 years, 100 years, and that is, I think, uh, very much different from the normal you know, operating system software. Do you have uh, any you know, thought about uh, how uh, your city operating system Bloomberg uh, really <coughs> has very forcefully 
installed a system for the data sharing. And they have a office called the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics. They have done a wonderful job. And the other cities are moving towards that direction, but it's not true.
cannot use such kind of data because customers will, will run away from such kind of companies. So in that sense, the basic part, any basis would be a kind of trust between the people and also the data service providers and also some sort of the agreement. At this moment, we clearly agree, but uh, when we look at carefully the some kind of sentences following that I agree, there are so many sentences and uh, sometimes they say that I may, I may transfer this, I mean, anyway, provide this data for some specific purpose to the third parties. And uh, in that sense, the, what we are lacking is a kind of trust. So the, probably we need a kind of social mechanism of establishing a kind of trust. But again, this is a kind of a kind of private, let's say, enterprise. So I probably see not necessary to enforce everyone to have some sort of agreement for providing the data. The people who agree to such kind of trust mechanism will submit or anyway will provide the data under such kind of contract or some sort of service. Probably that could be a start point. Otherwise, through the discussion with the government, all the data must be aggregated and uh, location accuracy should be, uh, and with location errors must be added, something like one kilometer or two kilometers. So then it completely kills the value of the data. Yeah. This is just, just my personal kind of comment. I think uh, privacy is definitely uh, important issue to into. Now, uh, if we look at the problems that can come from data analysis and analytics, roughly speaking, there are two different segments. One is the private segment, the other one is the public segment uh, for smart cities. In the private segment, you have, for examples, like you know, what you have seen in these uh, panel discussions, the location-based services, the uh, uh, intelligent services, things like that. These services can be provided by private uh, companies. And uh, in this case, definitely uh, you have very traditional, very typical issues that you have been seeing from all these location-based services. Then you have the public sector. In the public sector, it's typically uh, the applications or services provided or sponsored or driven by the government. And in that case, uh, the regulation is much stronger and the government is involved. So the privacy, although definitely is still uh, something that people will pay attention to, but is probably less of a, the issue than in the private sector. Uh, for instance, uh, if we look at the information that's available in the so-called open government initiative, you can find a lot of information. Uh, for instance, the Census Bureau information about the income of people living in a neighborhood, about the age, about the ethnicity groups, etc. All this information is available publicly, and you can get more of this kind of information now and more and more uh, through these open government initiatives. They are all open, of course, so that then you can ask the question of the privacy. Uh, typically, all this information is anonymized, but still, if you look at UK anonymity uh, issue, you can still have some inference. For instance, uh, if the, the neighborhood is very small, uh, contains just a few people, then from this kind of the public information, you can still have some inference. But overall, for big cities, it's uh, not that big an issue. Okay, thank you for all the comments on Paris Asia. So any more questions from the audience? Uh, yeah, maybe actually I will ask another question actually. I can see actually a lot of data came from the government. So I'm, think, actually I'm interested in how you can engage more with the government to get more data or get their interest. Because you, you have talked about like national security, like the emergency, like earthquake, flood. So uh, I think for academic we have a lot of interest in this, but how we can engage more with the government. Yeah, I, I don't know when and if you have some comments about this. Actually, for the uh, trajectory data, and we got from the Shanghai 
we signed some NDA agreement, and uh, but you know that uh, that's kind of embarrassing for us because of paper published, we use this data. People chasing us, hey, Lei, uh, very nice work. Can I use the data? Uh, we signed the NDA, so no, right? Say so the data we got from the government, and also we got some data from the uh, China Telecom and mobile mobile calling uh, phone calling data, and of course we signed some agreement. And other than sign the agreement, the other things we do is that we did indeed show them so that uh, we remove the ID, remove names, so you can see that um, ask your IT department or ST expert and check the data. You do not have any privacy issues here, and you cannot find who is calling whom. And you know, we are just doing the research, we are just for the academia uh, usage, and you know, they will probably give you the data, but it's not it's really hard because uh, they have their own IT support. They won't keep the data by themselves. They can do whatever they want to use. So, yes, a good question is how can we ask the I mean, government to trust the university or researcher, pure researcher, use their data for pure research? Um, you know, I have a hard experience, so it's not good that people to answer these questions. Okay. Uh, actually, I have an experience of working under the ministry. And uh, so in that sense, I have, uh, probably I know better about the, let's say, how to make a kind of negotiations with government agencies than the other academic faculty members. But nevertheless, of course, the, the negotiation with the government agencies is rather difficult because they have a lot of regulations and also the rules. But at the same time, we found, or I found that the uh, Recently, the more, and some of the variable, or, or even the many of the variable information comes from the private sectors. And the individual private companies, and actually they have a very uh, good data, but uh, usually uh, the aspect that is covered by that data is a little bit limited. For example, when we look at, uh, uh, let's say, traffic jam information, the GPS data from taxi is very useful. But when the number of taxis are a bit limited, actually the different taxi companies must get together to have a much better information about the services. But usually they do not have so much kind of alliance, or anyways, they don't have to make so much efforts for that kind of alliance. So in such kind of cases, the universities can be a kind of coordinator to collect the data, and if they provide the data to us, we will they make analysis and uh, return the more variable information on our services. And uh, within such kind of circles for the coordination, we could invite governmental sectors because they also want to have some sort of information. In return, for example, we can request them to provide some kind of, for example, data. Uh, I believe such kind of, let's say, the uh, exchange data with the data also creation of values just by and anyway, through the uh, anyway uh, aggregating or the correcting the uh, fragmentary <coughs> data. Actually, it's also it could be a kind of cures in inviting the data contribution from the governmental agencies and also even from the private sectors. My experience uh, in working with the government is that for Developing countries, there are data, but the data are really spread out in different forms. For instance, some data are just in the paper form, some data are stored in some personal computer, some data is stored in some uh, obsolete databases. So uh, having all this information collected together, you know, aggregated, it's actually uh, not easy. It's not easy for the government itself let alone the being shared with others. So now this is definitely an issue, but they don't count too much on such governments, simply because from an academic study perspective, you don't you want to get too much value out of this, even if they are willing to share with you. And uh, as uh, uh, my colleague said, it's uh, actually not easy for them to share information with you because they have lots of regulations. Then in developing countries, it's a little bit different. In developing countries, governments do have data, but in most cases, 
and uh, by and large, such data are collected actually through their partners with uh, part partners from the private sectors. So uh, if you want to get data, you have basically two venues. One is to go through the open data initiative, the open government initiative, where the, you have lots of places and you have the information available, whatever they can publish. The other one is really to work with the source of the information, which is the private sector. Okay, thank you for all the experience sharing. So I think due to time limit, we should stop here. So thank you again for all the speakers and the panelists. I guess this is the end of yeah, the day. Uh, I don't know. I think we should have some shadows going to Microsoft.